Okay, good afternoon. Just let me start with a question. Who has ever flight by airplane here? Raise your hand, please. Okay, that's pretty much what I expected. And now, who is scared of flying? Someone? Someone like, okay, I'm not really scared, but I get on the airplane and I feel like something wrong could happen, maybe? Okay, nobody? Well, you are brave here in Poland. <laughs> okay, it's true that um, uh, aviation is the safest mean of transport. More or less everyone knows that. But unfortunately, sometimes things go wrong. Things go wrong. Even if things go wrong, it doesn't always end up that bad, and we have to keep that in mind. I will show you here some examples of accidents uh, that, doesn't end up that, that don't end up that bad. So. This Boeing 767 landed in Warsaw Airport in 2011 with 220 people on board without, no, without landing gear. That means no wheels. What happened here? Okay, the pilot uh, noticed that the landing gear wasn't out, so he told that to the authorities. They sent a fire, fighter airplane for the from the Polish Air Force. So uh, he could check visually if the landing gear was out or not. It wasn't. So what, they, what did they do? The airplane started um, flying in circles around the airport for around two hours in order to burn out all the fuel inside. And in the meantime, the firefighters were putting some foam in the runway in order to let the, the aircraft um, land. So finally, none of the 220 people inside the airplane, in the airplane resulted injured at all. This is just one case. Let's see another one. Other thing you might be scared about flying is uh, having some kind of object, uh, having some strike of an object on the airplane. In this case, it was a bird, a big bird. But these kind of things are taken into account since the beginning in the, in the design stages of an airplane. So even if that impact was really near the cockpit, the airplane could go back to the airport and land safely. And talking about bird strikes, strikes who doesn't know this case, which is the airplane in New York which landed on Hudson River. What happened here was that uh, this aircraft was uh, taking off from New York, and suddenly uh, it had a bird strike. Um, in particular, the, the, these birds were um, Canadian geese, so pretty big ones and a great amount of them. So in this case, they hit the engines, not the, the cockpit, and the pilot lost the, all the power in both engines. He had no chance to go back to the airport, and he finally decided to land on the river. In this case, we cannot say that there were no injuries, because there were five severe injured people, and most of the passengers uh, needed uh, medical attention after that. But nothing more than that. OK, so what we are doing today is to look a little bit deeper in this accident to put some numbers on, and uh, we'll do that with Python. We are not showing a lot of code, we'll, we'll be focusing on the numbers, but all of that is done with pandas, and you'll have the code uh, after that. So my name is uh, Alejandro Saez, he's Jesus Martos, we are both aerospace engineers. We are part of a group called AeroPython, uh, which integrates people with passion about scientific programming and data analysis, especially if it's related to engineering or aerospace engineering. If you feel attracted about that, don't hesitate to come and talk to us afterwards. Um, well, our professional activity is related to uh, helicopter simulators development in the case of Jesus and to flight test data analysis in my case. 
but aircraft safety is something that is present in every activity in the aeronautics sector. It's something you really uh, learn since the beginning of your studies, that safety is there and you have to take that into account always. So um, now Jesus will talk to you a little bit about the database. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. As Alex said before, we're going to try to make an uh, analysis of uh, database uh, related to the safety in aviation. Uh, in order to do that, we needed an open database, and we only could find one. It's, this one is from uh, an American agency, the NTSB. Uh, this agency is uh, in charge of uh, analyzing every accident that happens to an American flight or related to any American in the world. So. And the most important is that they publish draw data. That was our key factor f for us to choose this database. And it's open. It was the only one we could find that was open from an agency. Um, OK, now let's start with the data. First of all, we wanted to make a, an analysis of the safety of a flight that any of us in this room could take a flight. Uh, you know, there are many kind of aircrafts. Uh, there are helicopters, there are small aircraft. So we wanted to focus on commercial aircraft. That is the one that I think most of us have ever taken. Also, this database makes a difference between the incident and the accident. Um, let's say that the incident is something that, an event that could lead to an accident, but it did not, luckily. And an accident, as you can read there, is um, an event that caused at least an injury or a serious uh, damage to the aircraft, or even the aircraft is missing, as we can see here. So let's start with the filter in order to get the proper data in order to make the analysis. If we draw all the incidents, this is what we get here. Clearly, the, base is, the, bas the database is American, as you can see. And also, I want to clarify that here we are seeing the incidents. We are not, gonna, we're not going to consider because uh, by law, you don't have to make a report after an incident happened. So it would not be representative for our analysis. Here we have the raw database of all the accidents. Here we can see, of course, it's an American database, so we have more there. But more or less, uh, American fly a lot, I think. So there are accidents all over the world. In this case, we are, we are seeing all kind of aircrafts, from helicopters to agricultural aircraft, all of them. So we have to do another filter. And this is what we get. This is uh, the accidents that we're going to be focusing during this talk. Uh, as we can see. Here is just the same picture, but focusing on America. These are the accidents that we're going to be focusing, only Americans. So, yeah. You're not here? No? Uh, OK. <laughs> OK, welcome. Uh, well, now it's time to you. Now it's Alice who's going to start to try to answer in the questions that we're going to be doing this talk. To the microphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now that we only have the commercial aircrafts and only the accidents, we might uh, be, we might feel like answering some questions. The first one could be which phase of flight is the safest? Well, let's just have a look at the phases a flight has. If you go to the airport, you go to the terminal, you go inside the airplane, the airplane is parked there. Then you have some taxi. That's the phase where the airplane is going to the, to the runway in order to take off. It will take off. It will climb until some alti altitude. And then we have cruise. Cruise is the longest phase of the flight. You will have your meal there. You will be reading, sleeping, or whatever there. And at some time, we'll start descending to the airport. We will have the approach phase. And then we will land and taxi again to the, to the terminal. So which one do you think is the safest, and which one do you think has most events? OK. I think that if you had answered me, probably 
taking off and landing are the phases that we are scared uh, the most about them. That's right, there's landing. We can see also takeoff up there. And we have a uh, cruise right there. But for us, also the surprise was to find their taxi and standing. That means the aircraft, which can go really fast and really high, uh, when it's on the ground, it, it has a lot of events, and also when it's stopped. We'll have a look at that right now. But, okay, that's the only related to the number of events. Let's see in each of the events what happens to the aircraft, really, and what happens to the people inside. Here we can see the level of damage the aircraft registered uh, for the events. The blue one is destroyed, orange, substantial damage, a green, minor damage, and red, none. Okay, so we can, we have like two different groups of, of accidents. Those one damaging uh, the aircraft a lot, like landing, taxi again, standing, takeoff, approach, and well, climbies more or less. Those ones really damage the aircraft. Okay, for the landing, uh, we, we could hope like that, also for the takeoff, but again, taxi and standing. It's a high level of damage to the aircraft. Um, has anyone here have an event uh, with the aircraft like standing or taxiing? Nope. So let's have a look at what kind of events we can have. This happens. This is an image at Boston Logan Airport. Uh, I don't remember the year, but it's like five years old, more or less. We can see an airplane which is standing, parked there, and another airplane on the right which was taxiing and suddenly hit with the wing tip the horizontal stabilizer of the airplane. So this is a substantial damage to the aircraft because it's not like a car that you have a small crash and well, your car, your car just looks like uh, worse. No, you have to go and have a full uh, revision of the aircraft because of that. So this is another kind of event which could happen. Obviously, this doesn't affect people. So the aircraft is important, but we see that there are events that highly affect the aircraft, but do they affect people? Here we can see in orange the total number of people unaffected by the event. That's no injuries at all. And in blue, we have injuries and also uh, casualties. The main conclusion we, we can draw from this uh, plot is that in most of the cases, most people survive or have no damages at all. So we can feel more relaxed right now. And then let's see what happens to the people who suffer some kind of injury. Now in blue we have the casualties and in orange uh, we have injuries, both severe and medium. Again, we have like two different kinds of events. Those one having more casualties than, than injured people and those one having more injured people. So during takeoff, approach, climb, and also maneuvering, uh, the number of casualties is really high. And we have the other group. And there's one there which, which for me it's like a little bit strange. Let's look at landing. Landing is dangerous, right? We, we saw a lot of events during landing. But we have to take into account that what we usually call landing is not what is called officially landing. Landing starts at the moment that the aircraft is like 50 meters on the ground and then when it's on the ground. The rest of the phase, of the phase before is called approach. And if we have a look at approach, it's a dangerous one. We are flying near the ground, we have little time to react, so that's dangerous. Once we are on the ground, things can go wrong. We can have an overrun. We can go away and not stop at the end of the runway. We can go outside the runway. We can have a hard landing. But that's not that dangerous, as we can see here. So uh, now we were uh, having a look at the phases of the flight. Let's see what leads to, to this kind of events right now. OK. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, if we, if, um, 
right now, if I would ask you the what are the most whoa no oh, no surprise <laughs> what are the, mo the events that happen the most during an accident? Uh, I suppose you have two sources: your own experience. I suppose most of you have ever encountered with some kind of turbulence during a flight. And also you and I and all, we have seen many movies. So we have seen collisions and fire and all of that. So that's our, what we think about when we are thinking about accidents in an airplane. And the data says that you are mostly right. The event that happened the most is the in-flight with encountering with water that is basically turbulences and also when there is uh, bad weather with ice, for example, the ice formation is very important to take into account for an airplane or a helicopter. And we have also uh, different kinds of collisions. Uh, collisions when uh, you are in flight, collisions when you are standing, like we said before. Uh, this is important to say, this is not the main cause of the accident, this is just an occurrence. In order to get an accident, as you probably know, it's not, uh, it's necessary usually more than one occurrence. It, there has to be, uh, happen more than one occurrence to get into an, an accident. Uh, focusing, uh, we will see in more detail this kind of events, but uh, focusing in the one that has the most accidents in flight encounter with weather. We can see an example, for example, uh, of a, an, an airplane that has to pass through a cloud and he found that that cloud was uh, full of uh, hail, that is some kind of snow, and this is the result. Usually the, the pilots are trained to avoid this kind of situation, but sometimes this happens, and this is the result. Obviously, it's also designed to, to, <laughs> to survive to these kind of events. And on the other part, what we can learn from this database and from all of this safety analysis that all the agencies are doing all over the world and every year is what we learn. Uh, we learn that, for example, the ice formation is very important for, for any kind of airplane or helicopter. So what we, hear, what we can see here is uh, a procedure that almost all the aircraft in mass uh, Almost all the aircraft has to do um, every day in, in countries, for, for example, like Poland, where it's very cold. Uh, this is a, pr a procedure to avoid the ice formation. So probably in Spain, you're not going to see this. But in Poland, you're going to see this every day. And this is basically from, from the experience we get, or from a database, or from the experience. Uh, yeah, from the experience. Now let's take a look at the same events that we were looking before, but what are the costs in terms of people injured? This, uh, I hope that relax you a little bit more because if you see the event that I think is the most common in flying encounters with weather, you see there are many accidents that, um, that had this event, but if you look at the uh, orange bar that is the people that has no is the uh, accident where there were not uh, people injured uh, is 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 very big so there are many accidents with with this event but the result is that no one is is injured so that's uh, that's important to remark and also I think that for example the we can see the Airframe component malfunction, that is something that is also very common in a, in a movie where a part of the aircraft gets out and suddenly the aircraft uh, has to land in a hard landing or something like that. But the reality is that usually the total number of fatalities is, is not uh, very big. Uh, and now in these graphics, we analyze again, the events, and we analyze in terms of damage to the aircraft. We can see that, for example, uh, well, the blue bar is those aircraft that are completely destroyed. The orange one are those who, are, who have substantial uh, damage. 
and the green one is minor changes, minor uh, damage, and the red one is non damage at all. We can see that, yes, for example, the malfunction or, yeah, we can focus on malfunction. Malfunction generates a lot of damage to the aircraft, but as we saw before, that doesn't translate it to injured, and that's important in terms of safety. And again, we have many factors in, in order to take a look. We wanted to make a simple analysis of fire to see how it affects an accident. Uh, if you can see, uh, the first column shows how many accidents, in how many accidents there were uh, uh, fire. Uh, in the f uh, second row, GRD, that means it was fire on ground. And the second was fire in flight, and in the third one was no fire at all. Uh, well, obviously, the first conclusion is that usually in an accident, there is no fire. So for the movies, it's <laughs> very nice, but the reality is that usually there is no fire in an accident. And also, what we can get from this data is that if there is flight on ground, the number of victims is less. Why? This is because we have learned from this, and the procedure, if there is fire close to an airport, uh, lead us to, uh, to have a better behavior. So pilots and the crew members, they are all trained in case of fire, in, when that happens on the ground, obviously when it's in flight, the limitations are bigger and it's different. So. Okay, so here we come up with another question. Does the age of the pilot uh, has any, have anything to do with, with the chances of having an accident? What do you think? Because, okay, we could think that maybe younger pilots are in a better physical condition, so they can maybe react quicker, uh, more quickly to an event. But we can also think that a more experienced pilot maybe reacts slower, but he takes the, the right choice. So what do you think? Here we have the number of accidents uh, registered in the database and the age of the pilot, both the pilots and the co-pilots in the, in the aircraft. We could be tempted to say that between 45 and 55 uh, we have more accidents, and that's true, but we also have to take into account the number of pilots uh, at its age. So uh, if we take the number of licenses uh, for its age, only for commercial aircrafts, okay? This doesn't include general aviation or any other. Only for general aviation, we have, this is the number. So now, just with a division, we have the accident, uh, the number of accidents divided uh, by the licenses. So like an accident rate. And we can see that between 19 and 29, we have much more accidents. Than, than for all their pilots. We were like kind of afraid of saying something that was wrong here, so we checked if someone else had uh, investigated, researched about that before, and we found that some people have investigated this issue before, and they say that the accident rate of airline transport rated pilots aged between 55 and 59 is approximately one third of that of pilots with the same rating, who are aged between 20 and 24. This is more or less the same we have. Maybe we could say that we have double there instead of one third, but it's the data we have and shows kind of the same result. So it does. Let's look at your pilots when you go inside the airplane. Say hi. <laughs> okay. So the last question we would like to answer is, is flying now safer than it was before? Here we can see the number of victims. We have fatal victims, severe and medium victims over the years. What we see here is that this is not a, a uniform data. This is like has events at some points and peaks. Uh, for example, I don't know if, okay. Here 
we have the terrorist attacks of uh, September 11th, 2001, and okay, other fatal years for, for aviation. So we cannot ex uh, extract any conclusion from this, from this um, plot. And uh, we have to say that even if many accidents, many, many accidents occur every year, not all of them have a high number of victims. So if the accident involves ASEAN people, Asian people, or European people, it won't be registered here. However, we can have a look at the number of accidents, which is more representative. Because we can say that the number of accidents can be something like proportional to the number of flights. And then if we have a North American flights, we can at least use this data to have an idea of, of what's going on. This is the number of accidents. Again, we see that the total number of accidents is going down lately, but we also have to uh, have a look at the number of flights going on. We also see that the number of flights is increasing every year. And well, just uh, a little detail here, this is recession crisis, not only Spain, Poland, and Europe suffer that, so it's there in American aviation, it's not us saying that. Uh, the, the data from this, the source from this data was uh, explaining a little bit about the evolution. So we have crisis there. If now we calculate an accident rate in accidents per million flights, we have with our data that we are around four accidents per million flight. Uh, Keep in mind that not all accidents had victims, uh, even not injured people. So, And also, we have to say that even if we can see that the accident rate is decreasing here, for the last year, the uh, institutions looking at aircraft safety are stating that we are not evolving that much. So as this is only partial data, and we would like to give you like the global official data. We can have a look at uh, EASA, which is European Aircraft, uh, Air European uh, Aircraft Safety Agency. Sorry for that. So uh, it's our official institution studying aircraft safety, and they say that the fatal accident rate is around 0 0.6 per million flights, and non-fatal, that means only injured people or maybe the aircraft substantially damaged, but no injured people, it's about 4.4. About so the global number would be something like five accidents per million flights. OK, until now, the, this is just like an analysis of the current data. But what can we do in order to improve? This is an initiative of EASA also, which is called Data for Safety. You know, we live in the era, let's say, of the big data, data analysis, machine learning. So we can do much more than storing our accidents in a 100, 200 megabytes database. And uh, they are talking about analyzing safety reports with, with natural language processing. They are talking about using not only the data of the accident, but also the flight data. You know, the, the aircraft has a uh, flight data recorder. We could use that data in order to compare it between different airplanes and look for some kind of anomalies happening there, which could lead to an accident imminently or in the next weeks, maybe. We have also the surveillance data, which is radars in the airports and all that kind of stuff, and also weather data, which is really detailed right now. So as uh, some conclusions, some conclusions about our analysis. That analysis process is not a bed of roses. That's something you probably know because you work on that. But as data scientists, is like the most sexy job position you can have right now. We have to say that a cleaning data and dealing with wrong data values and all that kind of stuff is not sexy at all, <laughs> and you know that. Fortunately, pandas help a lot in that process. So you will have the code if you don't know about pandas or if you are just curious about what we did. Uh, you, you can have a look there. And thank you very much for your attention. We have time for one question. Uh, do you have any questions? Just 
Okay. Oh. Yeah, if you, uh, if uh, out of all those um, uh, data analysis you've done, do you have some already conclusions like what could be improved, what areas should be improved, or something like that? Any yeah, ideas that you already have? This is the tough one. <laughs> okay. Just if I have to give you one recommendation, would be, I, I mean, this is just kind of a joke, but not that uh, joke. Keep your seatbelt fastened while you are inside the plane. Many of the victims we see there uh, are people that during the cruise phase are wearing no seatbelt at all. And suddenly, maybe because of turbulence or maybe because the pilot is forced to do some kind of maneuver to avoid other aircraft or whatever could happen, they go up and hit the ceiling, the top of the plane, or hit another passenger or something like that. And that leads to more serious injuries than we think before. Many people is like joking about uh, seat belts on, on planes, but I think that one is important. In a, in a global level, I think uh, obviously the, the place when you always have better chances to improve is where there are more accidents. So there are many things going around uh, approaches and takeoffs to the, to, the aircraft, to the airports as better navigation systems and better alerts to pilot, which can, uh, the, in order to be more assisted during the landing. So many times the pilot has just to adjust some, some buttons and, and he can only be watching what's going on just in case he has to, to take the control. So that's improving a lot and keep that going on will for sure improve this. Thank you for your presentation. And 